How could we prevent or reverse these, these fires that you mentioned in the body which are caused by malnutrition and, and not taking the right food choices? Well, like uh, most other things in dynamic systems, it's a question of balance. Uh, there are pro-inflammatory forces and there are anti-inflammatory forces. I think the problem is that in the 20th and 21st century we are overwhelmed with pro-inflammatory forces. So we need to reduce those. That's the start. And then we build up the anti-inflammatory forces as well. The pro-inflammatory forces would include things like um, smoking, for example. You're inhaling compounds which are very pro-inflammatory, so stop smoking. Um, a sedentary lifestyle appears to be pro-inflammatory, and many of us do not take enough exercise. Uh, so moderate levels of uh, physical activity are important. Another very important source of pro-inflammatory factors is our diet. A diet which, uh, thanks to the industrialization of food processing, has an omega-6 to 3 ratio, which is excessively high. And that foments chronic inflammation. And that's made worse by the fact that a lot of us eat processed foods and fast foods. Uh, and to make fast foods and to make processed foods cheaply, very often, uh, generally, requires high temperature cooking. When you pr produce foods with high temperatures, uh, a rather different kind of chemistry starts to occur in the food. It produces advanced glycation end products and advanced lipoxidation end products called ages and ales. And so when we eat those, they create pro-inflammatory climate in the body as well. So all of those things, bad. The anti-inflammatory components that we should increase include the beta-glucans, the 1,3,1,6 beta-glucans, which act at the level of the innate immune system, making it more effective so that infections are less likely to continue grumbling on for long periods of time, which is chronic inflammation. An effective acute inflammatory response, like the response to a bee sting, that's healthy. The beta-glucans help that. And it prevents or it reduces the likelihood of, as I said, a long drawn out infection. That's not good. But the other two categories of nutrient that have been taken out from the diet and we need to put back in are the omega-3 fatty acids, which means more oily fish, or properly formulated fish oils. And by that, I'm afraid I do not mean most of the products currently on the market. And polyphenols. These are the most uh, important other anti-inflammatory components. Now, omega-3s determine a kind of anti-inflammatory climate in the body. The polyphenols give you anti-inflammatory weather. They're acting in the short term. Put the two together and you damp the fires. So you take away the negative things, increase the positive things, and you move the needle from pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory. It's a lifestyle shift, fundamentally. Once you do that, your risk of acquiring one of the generative diseases is reduced. By how much? Well, the Victorian data says by over 90%, which means we can close down hospitals and put a lot of doctors out of business. <laughs>